fascinated by that in terms of the stick people, some of the ancient uh, mythological motifs that are found all across the world because the art is so similar in, in all these different places, Paleolithic art and, and things like this. Uh, and, and one of the things that has been suggested is that a lot of this, um, these motifs depict uh, you know, astrological, uh, in some ca- some cases, um, catastrophe that they show about a time where when the world was in upheav- upheaval, as it, as it is termed. And one of the things I wonder is, do you think that this is any in any way related what, with what you saw or with the dreams that you had in terms of that something is imminent, something is, you know, about to ha- happen, almost like a, a sense of doom in one day maybe in one way maybe coming back or what's your interpretation of that yeah. As, uh, v- very very true um this th- this is something that i i totally um get uh, i i've seen that yeah there is a major connection and uh despite all the unusual connections there is something about the imagery that relates to a time period as such as linear time would take us around thirteen thousand years and twenty six thousand years ago which uh looks at what looked like catastrophe or looked like huge changes to this reality. And uh, I spent long hours with a a very good friend who I haven't seen for a while, um, a photographer in the States who was an expert when it came to um, petroglyphs and rock art. And he he was compiling lots and lots of imagery, a lovely guy called Dan Budnick. Um, If he, if he hears this, get in touch Dan, because, uh, (laughs) you know, it's been, it's been a while, but, um, and he was showing me lots of imagery and um, we were doing lots of research and thinking about this. And, um, uh, he he was showing me how the wounded shaman in Lasco in um, in in Altamira, Altamira in Spain I think it was a lot of these images of the wounded shaman actually relate to the to the um, to, to some form of death um, archetypal death of the psyche mm. um, and and the world change. There's also other images and you're quite right about the astrological links and and the energetic changes that occurred across the planet. There was some work done in recent years that related to plasma and the the earth changes and the, the earth giving up a plasma or an energy field which was recorded in in rock art all over the world at yes, a certain yes. time. You've probably seen that it was in the Alien in the Sky um, documentary. And there's, there's other things that relate to that as well. Obviously, what is above is also below. And the, um, the astrological signs, as we see, as we saw them from Earth, changed, or the stars changed their positions, and w- not least Polaris and the pole star changed. And lots of images that relate to Coco Pelli in, the, in America, on one level, relate to the, the change in the... Um, in the energy, which probably related to an axis or pole shift at some point as well. Mm. And saying that, there was something else. There was something to do with the duality and the understanding of duality and the, sp- the splitting of what they call the supreme being or, or the splitting of oneness into separation because this is recorded almost kind of um, tenuously in parts but it's recorded throughout lots of different cultures. I mean, even into the civilizations of Egypt much later, mm. Um, let's say kind of around, um, you know, 5,000 years ago, you have the images of, uh, of Horus and then uh, Set. And they look very similar in their positions and the way in which they've been drawn to images of um, Masawa and Kokopelli, the god of death and the god of life, mm. which relates to the duality. And a lot of these images that are put on the rocks also point to a certain direction as well, which relates to the way in which we were seeing the skies in that time in terms of huge migrations because of the way in which the earth was changing, the way in which there was probably instant catastrophe in some parts, there was floods and so on and so on. And there's mainly a lot of it is to do with the way in which we, which we um you know we have a relationship with the sun hence kokopelli was a um, a solar deity and a life-giving deity whereas masoa was the uh, the hopi deity for death and some say that death came into this reality uh with uh you know at at at, at that time when we went through great change right, whereas right. it was a time before when there was a, a different process of death which was more to do with dropping dropping your body, dropping your cloak, as the American Indians would call it, rather, rather than actually being forced upon us through a time sequence where, you know, ageing has, has got narrower, you know, kind of got narrower and narrower in terms of how long we live, mm. whereas probably in the past, as we have records to show that people could live longer if they wanted to. Yeah, so. almost like a force of will. It's, it's more a, a choice that you, 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 you choose to leave this world behind because you want to explore a greater uh, realm at that point, you know, and, and 
it, it sounds to me a little bit as well that it connects with the possibility of the uh, uh, Julian Jane's work on the bicameral mind, almost like that we had a, a, a single con- consciousness in that sense, or, or our connection with nature was more prominent, but due to this catastrophe, we, we got this split, just as you mentioned, from oneness into polarity or duality. What can you even argue that uh, the ego itself actually was created at this point? What do you think about that, Neil? I think so, yeah. I think also that the idea of the duality between the left and right brain is part of that split. I think the, the chasm and the, the, uh, the bridge between the two sides of the brain is very much untapped in that way. Mm. There's, a, there's a lot of reminders in the cells between the two parts of the brain that hint at the the oneness that you were just talking about and the fact that the world that we're living in and has been very much polished to the highest levels of sophistication over you know over a good thousand two thousand years um, that we now have uh, this very much walled up left brain reality where the right brain the the levels and realms of the of, the, of our mind that link us to solar stellar consciousness and um, and the dream time is very much shut down and and um, and the, and the you know rebuked and defunct as such and we don't we, we don't go anywhere near it and if you look at the educational establishments and the the overly anal- analytical world that we live in then then um, there has definitely been a split and this is this is something that is manifest very much in the world that we live some people say that the you know the the, the splitting between the two brains could go back to a time period on Earth when, when we had um, catastrophe, or you know, we had a tear in that sense, a, a, what we call a schism. Um, there, there could also be references to um, some kind of genetic modification yes. of the human genetic spacesuit, like an upgrade as such, at some point. You know, and, and that's hard to pinpoint. But you know, this talk of two hundred thousand years ago, this talk of a thirty thousand year ago <clears throat> upgrade. I mean, f- look at Neanderthals, for example, Henrik. You know, yeah. look, look at the nature in which Homo sapiens and, and, and Neanderthal were very two very different um, types of human being. And there was talk for many years that that one one died off as the other one took its place. But actually, it's not true. When you look at the evidence, Neanderthal w- was still around uh, in smaller um, communities around that time and it's almost like they were little by little uh, almost removed yeah, yeah. Uh, almost like a genetic crop overrides an organic crop yeah it, it's not uh, a dramatic exactly. uh, uh, you know stop as, as it were bringing the new species uh, but at the same time uh, the I think that the the introduction of the new species that seems to have been very much uh, an instant almost in terms of historical time they they mm-hmm. come onto the scene, so to speak, in a, in a very quick. There's no record of them previously in the uh, uh, in terms of archaeology, but then they show up all of a sudden, and that's that's interesting as well, Neil. Just as you say, yeah. it could hint towards this genetic uh, uh, interference or manipulation from someone. Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, there's 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 a lot more information to know on this. You know, I mean, there's 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 a huge ton of stuff that's uh, I wouldn't even start to scratch the surface today because we haven't got the time. But there's there there's a lot of information relating to the left brain and right brain and the genetic space suit, the modification of the human form, the reptilian brain. All of this stuff relates to how we've uh, uh, been uh, kind of allowed to, or we've we've been we've been nurtured to. That's the better word. We've 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 been nurtured in a way, in a direction that wants us to shut down the right brain and have the left brain as the main point of focus. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, there's—I mean, there's been lots of work done on it. I, I remember—I don't know whether you're familiar with the work of Swedenborg. Um, yeah, a little bit, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was around the time of William Blake? I mean, he did vast amounts of um, experiments looking at the nervous system and the cerebral cortex and all that kind of thing. And he, you know, even back then, 300 years ago, they came to the conclusion that the, as he put, as he put it, I thought it was quite amusing. He put it. He said the three muses were, were um, basically uh, had become mute. You know, the uh, the idea of. Uh, in other words, the, the the music, the creativity, the art, which which is right brain dominant, had had been slowly um, removed mm-hmm. via via obviously via programming and via society. And when you look at the world in that way, and you look at the the um, the things that pass, the stuff that passes for uh, for rationality. You know, we, we don't even have to start naming it. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yep. Then, 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 you, you know, um, there is something amiss somewhere. Yeah. Because it, we're not operating in that sense as a true 
human being, we're not operating at the levels of, of um, consciousness that we should be operating at. 